Can you imagine Donald Trump standing up one day and delivering a State of the Union address? Well, I can imagine it uh, in a Saturday night skit. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. He will never be president of the United States. Donald Trump will never be elected president of the United States. Now, Donald Trump is not going to become president of the United States. Donald Trump is not going to be president of the United States. However respectful of the fact that the people have not voted, he's not going to be president of the United States. Donald Trump is not going to be president of the United States. Let's be clear. Donald Trump will lose the election. I have one thing to say, one thing only, and that is that this race is over. I think Donald it, Trump will be the nominee and will lose badly. No this one's going to be happier than President, President Obama, Obama when Trump loses. Uh, no one, what? except for me. I think uh, that Donald Trump's campaign is over. Like it's a zombie, right? Like it's a walking dead. It's not, there's nowhere for him to go. And the fact that most people think Donald Trump is going to lose. There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> That's not going to happen. When the inevitable happens, which is a very substantial landslide victory on November 8th. And we need, when this race is over, to talk about why that was. I, I personally think this race is over. To me, this race is over. Politico's latest survey of political insiders agrees, quote, Clinton will crush Trump in November. This last week, he confirmed to the National Review that he is again considering a run in 2016. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Look at me. Do it. I will personally write you a campaign check now on behalf of this country, which does not want you to be president, but which badly wants you to run. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. Is that people think that Donald Trump is a clown. Do Donald, Donald Trump is a clown. I mean, does anybody seriously think that Donald Trump is serious about running for president? Donald Trump, you know, he's a clown. They said basically this is the beginning of the end for Trump. The beginning of the end. The beginning of the end? This is probably starting of the beginning of the end for, for Donald Trump. So right now we have Hillary's about a 75 or an 80 percent favorite. We have different versions yeah, of the forecast right. you can look at. Paul has Hillary Clinton up by double digits nationally, 12 points, 50 to 38, a four-way race. Now, I'm walking around uh, Ohio, I sense a great disturbance in the force. As I walk around here and I watch the people and I hear people uh, either talking to them or overhearing them, here's the sense that I got. Oh no, Trump's going to win. They're not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm looking around at these folks thinking... Really? Like they, oh God, the establishment doesn't get it. Like it's not that she's a woman, although that, by the way, will, I mean, I'm, I just, Hillary screams, I am your standard politician. I'm the same politician you've seen all your life. And these folks don't look like they're in the mood for it. For this incredible woman to step into the role that she is meant to have. And we, we, all of us, are going to help her get there. Okay. Here she is! <laughs> hey guys. Have <coughs> talk. So, <coughs> so go check out healthcare.gov or call 1 800. 318-2596, and someone will personally help you. You shouldn't have, what was that? Is that a dog? Hillary! <laughs> it's Hillary. <laughs> reporting it, Katie, you're not reporting it, Katie. But there's something happening, Katie. There's something happening, Katie. They're chanting USA, USA, USA here. The mood only grows happier by the minute. Sorry to keep you waiting, complicated business. A lot of people have laughed at me over the years. Now they're not laughing so much. Thank you for allowing our country to have the freedom and opportunity to vote in a democratic and civil fashion. I would like to congratulate Miss Clinton on her winning of the President of the United States. What? what? Hillary Clinton didn't win.
Donald Trump won. Donald Trump is the new president. <laughs> Dear America, heads up world, this one's gonna sting. Donald Trump is your new boss. Let me be the first to explain to you what actually happened. America happened. America! I love Mexican people. Canada's immigration website crashed. We're all gonna die. <laughs> I hate this year. <laughs> <laughs>
people voted for Hillary, but the system favored Trump. Thing is, he's not gonna be my president. He's not only disrespecting me and my beliefs and my gender, but my friends' beliefs, gender, and religion. And that's not the kind of president that needs to be in office. I hope your conscience is okay, that your friends are out there afraid for their lives because you are allowing that this bigot become president. Look at me! Feel the anger inside of you. It's not what a lot of millennials wanted. Things are really crazy. I don't know. It's a really hard thing. Uh, it's just, it's really hard. Ever, ever thought that he would have won when he announced that he was running? I thought it was a joke when he won. I was just waiting for him to say this is a joke. This is the view at Clinton headquarters, obviously reacting to that news in in Florida. Long faces uh, at this. Stunning information as it's been progressing here of Donald Trump winning Iowa, which was pretty much anticipated, and Florida. But this is such a narrow path. And for all this time, we've been talking about the multiple paths that she had and the narrow path that he had. And clearly, that was a misjudgment by all of the conventional wisdom. So pollsters missed it. Correspondents missed it. Uh, all of the analysis, the focus on the early vote, which was clearly misplaced because we were attributing too much weight to the early vote and not counting what was still out there. Andrea Mitchell at the Clinton headquarters where there has been a sharp reaction to that news that Florida has gone to Donald Trump. It is the opposite reaction. Going through some of the uh, exit polling data and you came across something fascinating. Well, this is fascinating. One of the swing groups that we have been watching in this election is suburban women who swung from uh, uh, Bush to Rom, excuse me, from uh, Obama won them in the last election and we were wondering where they would go. So. Clinton was in Wisconsin, we just checked, was April 2nd, seven months ago. So a tight. If you voted for Donald Trump, you voted for people like me to be put in fucking camps like Auschwitz. You voted for that. Wolf, the scene here is so different than it was a few hours ago when people were happy and relaxed. I have been looking around the room at people who are stone faced. Some of them have been crying. We have seen people leaving the venue, including some who have been sitting on the risers behind the podium where Hillary Clinton is supposed to speak. Uh, there are people who are just in shock. I've seen mouths open as folks here in the audience are watching the results come in, many of them with their arms crossed and uh, a hand to their mouth. They are just stunned uh, as they watch what is going on here. It's just been a, a complete reversal from what we saw uh, a few hours ago. And what they are watching is various networks, as we're seeing these calls being made for different states, they've been monitoring a lot of them, their iPhones, seeing uh, certainly the projections for what is going to happen. And they are just stunned at the idea that they were completely sure they were coming to this event uh, for what they thought would be even an early night to celebrate Hillary Clinton becoming the first uh, female president. And now they are confronting the reality that they could be walking out of here uh, either not knowing, but perhaps expecting that Donald Trump is going to become president. I mean, you're seeing it here on these faces. They are just stunned. People who were talking and laughing before are standing there not talking to the folks that they came with. So much anger and so much contempt for you. But know that even through all of it, I love you because you're a human being, because you deserve rights. I don't care if you don't think I do. <laughs> but you do, I guess. So have fun with your vote. All the blood and all the injustice is in your hands. Trump. Trump won. He won. 
And which Republican candidate <clears throat> has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump. At least I will go down as a president. Because a vision softly creeping. <laughs> you're awake, by the way. You're not having a terrible, terrible dream. Also, you're not dead and you haven't gone to hell. This is your life now. This is our election now. This is us. This is our country. It's real. I'm literally about to fucking kill myself and I'm not kidding. You better fucking fix this shit right now. I literally am gonna die. I need an ambulance. I can't believe That in her lifetime, she deserves to be the first female president. And that's what makes me so sad. <laughs> <laughs> and President Obama, Mr. Obama, I want to say thank you for everything you've done in this past. of unfathomable sadness. Mm, yummy. Yummy, you guys. Bing, 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 bing. Bong, bong, bing, 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 bong. I'm triggered. I'm counted in those all-important battleground states. We are going to stay here right till the end. So much drama here tonight. Could the biggest upset in presidential history be in the making? We'll be right back. North Carolina, Ohio, but if you give him Florida, where he's got a commanding lead, if you give him uh, New Hampshire, where he is leading, if you look at now, now. I, I remember like eight years old, wanting pen pals, and wanted to write. Mom was like, yeah, what? This is a The United States of America just reaffirmed its commitment to being the greatest country in the history of human civilization. And it's wonderful. The best thing about it, of course, is that they All are... the illegals are going home. Well, also that. <laughs> Donald Trump! What are you doing? I am locked down to this car. And why are you doing that? Because you don't want them to move your car, right? I right, mean, you want, I mean, I'm just you want to stop personal. Trump? Uh, yeah, I want to stop Trump. I want to shut down his protest. He doesn't have a place in this state. He doesn't have a place in the U.S. We don't want that. Where's the key? Can you get out? Uh, no, I don't have one. It's gone. I, I did it anyway, but I, I felt like maybe they were right. I don't know. Are, are we, like, am I the bad guy? I kept, you know, uh, so I don't know if you know this, but I had those doubts, right? And, like, maybe we need to be more credible. Maybe we need to do this. Maybe we need to do that. And maybe that even did hold me back more than I should have been held back. I don't know. I'm, I'm being honest with you, right? And so, no, they were wrong. They were wrong. It, whatever little I held back, I shouldn't have held it back. And we won't hold it back going forward. The era of politeness for the progressives is over. Alex okay. Jones will literally have meetings in the White House. Yeah, the president will go on Alex Jones' show.
But let me tell you something, Donald Trump is not my president and he never will be my president because I will never bow to a racist, xenophobic dictator. <laughs> this is an incredibly important moment in history. If you've wondered, if I lived in Nazi Germany, would I be a Nazi? Or would I be in resistance against the Nazis? This is your time to figure out what kind of fucking person you are. If you support Donald Trump, you're a Nazi. Donald Trump is a fascist. And whatever incredibly unconstitutional things Donald Trump has up his sleeve are that much easier to pass. There are no checks and balances anymore, in case you don't understand this. We have a dictator in the White House. Donald Trump, you are not my president. You will never be my president because I will never bow to a fascist dictator. Half of this country fucking hates your guts. This is the beginning. It is far from over. We've been letting people get away with being sexist, racist, pieces of shit. I'm done. Resist. Are you freaking kidding me? You've got to be choking me. <laughs> this is the equivalent of having fucking Westboro Baptist Church as president. We might as well have elected the Westboro Baptist Church. It's disgusting what has been done. Trump does not care about people. He does not care about anybody. This is just seriously just to put his mark on the world. That's it. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck about minorities, Latinos, Blacks, Hispanics, Asians, LGBTQ people, Jewish people. doesn't fucking care. I can't believe you people are... What is he going to do to make America rich? Is he going to give you a bunch of money? Is he going to invest in you? Are you going to be on The Apprentice and invest in him? Is that it? I don't know why fucking this got happened. I was dumb to think Clinton had a chance to win. But it's dumber that fucking people elected fucking Trump. <laughs> I considered even leaving this country, seriously. Going to grad school in some other country. <sighs> I can't believe this I don't know. Uh, I, I was keeping re renewing Google every 30 seconds, keeping an eye on it, and when I saw Trump was ahead, I, I couldn't. I didn't even stay up to get the official decree. I, I just went to bed early because I didn't want to listen to Barrett. When I woke up, I was depressed as fuck, and I'm still I am. Trump is president. It's not good for America. You know how he is. You know what he'll do. You know how racist and just everyone. Everyone was saying that racism is not here. Racism died. That racism died out. And you hear now, like, see the video from the bre the, the Breakfast Club. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't talk. I'm running. I, I really had woke up three o'clock this morning. Find out Trump was a uh, president. Have been to sleep since. So I'm mad tired. But I had to had to make some stuff clear. Had to make some like I nice mean, some good. Just put my, my opinion out there. I really don't know what to say. I'm beyond baffled. Like I'm, I don't I don't know why would you rate, uh, vote for a racist dude, sexist dude, hypocritical, hypocritical. Oh, fucking whatever, man. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I just want to say that if you support Donald Trump, if you voted for Donald Trump, if you could not vote, but if you could have, you would have voted for Donald Trump, um, fuck you. I am not shocked that this man, this racist, sexist man, xenophobic man, will be our, is our president. I'm not shocked. America was never great. It wasn't great when white people killed off the Native Americans. It wasn't great when white people enslaved an entire race. It wasn't great when white people began to hang black people, burn black people alive, burn our houses down. It wasn't great when only white women were given the right to vote. America has never been great. After weeks of taunting Trump supporters over Trump's suggestion that he might not immediately accept the election result, Hillary voters came together, preached a message of unity, and graciously accepted Donald Trump's victory. Oh no, they actually rioted, attacked people in the street, and threatened to kill Donald Trump and his supporters. He refused to say that he would respect 
the results of this election. Now, make no mistake, by doing that, he is threatening our democracy. And the peaceful transition, the peaceful transition of power is one of the things that sets us apart. It's how we hold our country together, no matter who's in charge. All year, they preached the mantra, Love Trump's hate. All year, they denounced us as being hateful and intolerant. And what's the first thing they do after the election? Engage in rampant hateful intolerance. This tolerant liberal called for people to die to prevent Trump from taking office. We can't just do rallies, we have to fight back. There will be casualties on both sides. There will be because people have to die to make a change in this yeah. world. Look at this idiot. Wall Street is the enemy, not Muslims or immigrants. You just voted for someone whose entire campaign was funded by Wall Street, you utter fucking moron. Look at this clown. I am gay, I am in love, I am terrified. Yeah, you didn't seem to be too terrified by 20% of Hillary's campaign being funded by a country that still executes gay people. Seriously, has anyone told you people that you can't change the result of a democratic election by throwing a temper tantrum. The Electoral College isn't going to look at you burning a Donald Trump effigy and think, oh well, a bunch of butt-hurt losers had a hissy fit. So I guess we better just invalidate the entire election and just have everyone vote again until Hillary wins. You're literally protesting against free democratic elections. Your behavior is why Trump won in the first place. Do you understand that yet? Americans saw you attacking innocent people, burning shit down and rioting all year. And they responded by voting against what you represent. Also, you're carrying Mexican flags while chanting Trump is not my president. You know that this is America, right? Do you know what country you're actually in? SJWs are trying to pressure the Electoral College to disregard the vote altogether. Because blocking the outcome of legitimate free elections because you don't like the result is so progressive! It's not what dictators in third world countries do at all. Now Katy Perry thinks that she's Che Guevara. Rise up, the revolution is coming! Seriously, fuck off to North Korea. You'd like it there. You won't have to worry about elections because your candidate wins every time. Look at the unhinged insanity that motivates these people. I remember yesterday when I was naive and I thought the September 11 attacks were the worst thing that could happen to America. Yeah, that's right. 9-11, a terrorist attack that killed thousands of people that led to multiple wars that killed hundreds of thousands more people and ruined the Middle East, Donald Trump is worse than that. Yay, let's all get ready for World War II. Hey dipshit, World War II already happened. I have friends that are literally scared for their lives. Personally, I don't think a president should have that kind of mass effect on people. They're probably scared because for the last year, you've been regurgitating hysterical media propaganda about how Donald Trump is literally Hitler. It's your own fault that they're scared of a democratically elected president. And it's the media to blame for inciting these anti-Trump riots. They're even paying people to play the role of anti-Trump agitators. If Trump supporters had reacted to a Hillary victory like this, the media would be denouncing them right now as dangerous, democracy-hating bigots. The media is also reporting on all this as if it's some kind of spontaneous grassroots uprising. Wrong again. It's being coordinated and paid for by billionaire globalist scumbag George Soros and MoveOn.org. In Austin, the protesters were even loaded onto special buses and transported to the scene of the demonstrations. Why is the political elite encouraging and funding all this? Because, like many of the protesters, they have complete contempt for democracy. They shudder at the very concept of ordinary people having a say in the future of their own country. Well, the people have had their say, and it's a big fuck you. They are literally walking up and down the street, breaking every window they see. Unbelievable. There goes another one. There goes another one. There and there he goes.
goes again. These mass protesters are destroying anything they see. Great time to enjoy this is the Portland Police Bureau. You must leave the area near Southwest Yam Hill and Southwest Fifth Avenue. Travel east on Southwest Yam Hill. Move now. Move now. East on Southwest Yam Hill. North on Southwest Everett. Failure to comply will result in arrest. The use of riot control agents and impact weapons. Lily, your sign. Um, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. If, if we don't fight, who's going to fight for us? People had to die for freedom where we're at today. We can't just do rallies. We have to fight back. There will be casualties on both sides. There will be because people have to die to make a change in this world. But Trump, enough with your racism. Stop splitting families. Let, don't split my family. And you're fearful that you're going to lose friends and relatives to people. Oh, yeah, a lot. Friends, family, even all races. Not just my Hispanic culture, but the rest of the races. Don't take away our rights. You know, you impeach Donald Trump. That's what he needs to get yeah. impeached. All right, Paul. Uh, Paul. Well, as you can hear, Paul, Don, that's some much. of the sentiments here. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Paul. Mexican flag. Now, let me ask you, what would happen if... An American went to Mexico and protested with an American flag. What would happen to them? Some crazy shit. I have so much hatred for Donald Trump. So much hatred for Donald Trump. You don't want to kill him, dude. Fuck Donald Trump. I don't want to kill him, but I mean, I'll catch his face. I mean, gotta knock a nigga out real quick. <laughs> essentially encouraging illegal immigrants to vote. Listen to his shocking response to a question from actress Gina Rodriguez. Many of the millennials, dreamers, undocumented uh, citizens, and I call them citizens because they contribute to this country, are fearful of voting. So if I vote, will immigration know where I live? Will they come for my family and deport us? Not true. The sanctity of the vote is strictly confidential. Sanctity of the vote, but no sanctity for the requirements to vote, namely citizenship. And that's the President of the United States talking and apparently trying to encourage such votes by illegal immigrants. Student support of Donald Trump may have made her a target. ABC 7 News reporter Katie Marzullo spoke with the Woodside High School student attacked in that video and her mother, Katie. Dan Ama, the student, and her parents tell me they are shocked that something like this could happen. She says all of her friends were posting their feelings and their thoughts on election night, but it looks like her post got her beat up. Cell phone video captures the moment a female student attacks sophomore Jade Arminio. This girl comes up to me and she said, do you hate Mexicans? And I was like, no. And she said, you support Trump. You hate Mexicans. Jade says the girl hit her, threw her to the ground, and pulled out her earrings and her hair. She was left with a bloody nose and scratches and bruises. Before the results came in on election night, Jade had posted on Instagram that she hoped Trump would win. I don't think I could name one person on, one, on any of my accounts, social media accounts, who didn't say their opinion last night. Jade's parents say they're mortified about what happened. My husband and I don't put our political views or stuff like that on social media, but the kids still do it and that's their life. And you know, we try to tell them, don't do that. But even if she does, she should never ever be hit like that. The principal of Woodside High School issued a statement that reads in part, the recorded incident was investigated in conjunction with law enforcement and appropriate disciplinary action has been taken. 
Jade says she's also now the target of social media hate mail, but she's taking it in stride. In high school, if you really care about what every single person thinks, you're going to get torn apart. Jade's parents say they're keeping her out of school until they know she'll be safe. In Woodside, Katie Marzullo, ABC 7 News. Did she not say that? No. When did I say that? You did not say that. No. When? On Instagram? No. You most definitely did. Oh, Justin did. did. Oh. Can somebody please tell me that she did? She did. She did. She did. She did. She did. Everybody. Everybody. Will you handle those, cuz? Come on, boy. <laughs> I got them all over, Malia. Wait. I really want to. You really want to what? You really want to what? Oh, oh. she's yelling. Oh. Oh. She's raising her voice. Wow. Really? Wow. Wow. What? Oh. Wow. 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 W
have been suspended pending an investigation. I know we've had we've been very opinionated on, on this election, but one thing I never I've, I've never said anything to the point where I would um, incite violence. My son doesn't have a mean bone in his body. They say they hope their story encourages parents to speak to their children on how to be compassionate and accepting towards those that believe differently. That's what America is about. <laughs> That's what the election process is about. We had to respect the last year or the last election revolt, results, and I feel like everybody needs to respect this election re results. For the full statement from Stafford MSD, you can go to fox26houston.com. We'll keep you updated on the pending investigation on the students who were involved. In the newsroom, Scarlett Fakar, Fox 26 News. Shouldn't be president, and I think that there's a lot of extra. You shouldn't um, go disturb the people studying. I actually wasn't. If I if I was not. It's all right. To, it's all right this, to protest. No, go out on no, the no, no, no. And This is a walkway. Yep. Go out on the dying and protest. This is they actually was, they a that, very a permanent walkway for uh, the entire they said that, uh, campus. People was in there protesting. The entire disturbing campus. Disturbing people doing their stuff, studying. I was not in the library. I was just coming from my job. Okay. So, um... Proceed to jump in front of my vehicle. Jump in front of your vehicle. Are you kidding me? You're driving down a f***ing walkway hey, in the middle me. of Central Campus. You can talk to me and you can address me appropriately. You don't I did. need to curse at me. You don't I need did. to swear at me. And it doesn't matter. It does matter. It does. Yeah. Could you go over there? Alex wants to know if you have a door on your house. Do I have a drawer on my house? Of course I do. I have many doors on my house. All right. Do you have a fence in your yard? I do not have a fence. She doesn't have a fence, but she has a door. Yes, I do. Right. The countries so have to have door doors. So a door keeps out un uninvited people, right? Correct. Okay. And I have a large dog as that, well. Oh, a large dog? Yes. Okay. She does agree. So that's essentially what a border is. Right. I understand that. Right. How many of the people come over here are actually violent and causing harm? I would say not not the majority of them, but the ones that are, we need to deport. I believe in I believe in borders, but I do not believe in a wall. Talk to Pete Brain. You build a ten foot wall, they're going to be selling eleven foot ladders. We don't have a right to defend our borders. You lock your doors at night. Well, why do you do that? You should open your doors at night. I, I don't want to come in and sleep on your. I don't care. I would like to come into your house and sleep on your couch, sir. What I don't I'm like trying to get out of your fridge. Can you please leave your door open Absolutely. tonight? Absolutely. You will? Absolutely. Can you give me your address so Just I can get some I might be hungry. For I, I, I am. I, 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 am I, am I am an unemployed veteran. Hurt. I would love some free food. Absolutely. I would love a place to sleep tonight. What would you want? I'll just give you your address. address. Right. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give me my address. Sir. Why not? Because I but don't you can lock your doors. I don't know you. Well, I'm saying that Donald Trump stands for hate. Okay, that's what you say, but can you prove it with facts? No? Look at the news headlines. 
How is Donald Trump racist? How is Donald Trump racist? Like, we don't have to hate each other. I truly, truly... I feel very worried. I don't know if I could be friends with someone who is voting for Donald Trump. But I don't understand. It's just politics. He, he called me. He said, I think we can be friends. He's trying to be friends. No, He's trying to so be friends. stupid. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you saying that? Why, why are you saying don't I'm stupid? Hey, he's trying to be real. No, 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 no. So stupid. Wait, wait, how is that stupid? I, I, it's not just politics. It's I'm educated. I got to tell your fault. Maybe. I'm uneducated? Yeah. Well, you were making fun of me for being educated no, earlier. Listen, listen, no, listen. I was making fun no. of you for being uneducated to support Donald Trump. Nobody with a brain would support Donald you Trump. You have to listen to God's It's like the direction that you're sending our society. Well, how? And it's a, because to promote the, the leader of the, the great world, to vote for the leader of the great world to be someone who is homophobic, sexist, simply stupid, volatile, um, on edge, like just yeah, unintelligent. Okay, pause. I just Why don't you know what you're talking about. Homophobic? Have you not? Have you watched the debate? Yes. The guy who live under a fucking insane. He's fucking. He's honestly. I hate this word, but he's fucking retarded. He's a little bit mentally like off. He's like. Wait, 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 wait. He probably. Oh, no, no, no. If he's as retarded. How did he make billions of dollars? Because he was. He started out with a million dollars and he ripped people off. He ripped off. Did you know that To a billion? What? Yes. And the law hasn't done anything? No, he's manipulating what the law in a lot of ways. Did you not hear him in the debate say, um, no, I didn't pay federal taxes because I'm smart. Well, yeah, most billionaires don't pay federal taxes. That's true. That's not true. That's yeah. where you got to go do some research. Well, truly. Do research. Truly. Because they're like, um, Mark Cuban. There's a ton of billionaires. Mark Cuban. He, there are a ton of billionaires who pay all of their taxes and give their tax returns. They show their tax returns to show that they pay yeah. all the taxes that are due to people who are less fortunate than them, who be people who weren't born into circumstances no, 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 like no. them. That's not how taxes work. No, that is how taxes work. No, that's how socialism no, works. No, listen, listen, listen. But think about the roads you drive on every day. Who's going to pay yeah. for the road? They suck. Who would pay for those if there weren't taxes? Do you drive to work? Well, well, now hold on. Have you looked the at the fuck budget? Who would pay for the fucking roads? You're a fucking Wait a second. Hold on. Have you looked at the budget? I can't. Most of, like, 75% of our so spending goes to military. Wars. We're military. They go for wars. Yeah. You probably you fucking support. Oh, wait, Donald you, Trump you, didn't you, support the Iraqi there? war. Why are you well, because I think Washington has become corrupt over the last decades, and Donald Trump is the first non-politician. Because politicians like Hillary Clinton have had pay-for-play programs and let Americans die overseas to create hey. scares of terrorism, okay? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I am right. And I have done my research, actually. Oh, yeah? Yes, I have. you just said that most billionaires don't Do you realize, let me ask you a question, do you realize that the same people that fund ISIS fund Hillary Clinton? You're a dumb, great fucking shit. No, no, bro. You, you can look this up. This is public information, man. This is public information. I'm very much. Let me hear your facts and evidence. Oh my god. Let me hear your facts and evidence. I'm brainwashed with facts and evidence. Let me hear yours. How is Donald Trump racist? How is Donald Trump racist? Hold on a second. Did you guys hear what she just said? Have you watched How is Donald Trump racist? Let's take a look back and watch her debate and see if we can learn something. How is Donald Trump racist? I hate this word, but he's fucking retarded. You look at the budget. Do you realize that the same people that fund ISIS fund Hillary Clinton? No, no, bro. You can look this up. This is public information, man.
privilege is a myth. It's a myth. Every race is susceptible to being rich or poor. It's a myth. That's a myth. So there is no, there's been white, white people that have not. <laughs> You're an American student feminist human against Trump. I am. What's your biggest problem with him? Uh, mostly everything. It's pretty hard to pinpoint it, but I've noticed that's an issue with uh, with these people. Can you just give me one little maybe sentence he said that you disagree with, or one policy he's going to enact? So so far, your biggest beefs are that he he described his uh, daughter as attractive, and that his penis came up in a debate that you haven't seen. Not my biggest beefs, no. Well, that's all we got. Well, you got a big one? Uh, yeah, he's racist. He's sexist. I haven't heard really any. Firm policy. Well, we just keep hearing these terms, racist. What's a racist thing he said? That he insinuating that Mexico is sending their rapists? They are. 80% of the young girls who cross the border get raped. I thought you feminists hate rape. I do. So do you think 80% is a pretty bad stat for women getting raped? 80% of the women crossing the border get raped. By Americans? No, by illegals. Okay. Thanks. I don't thank me. I didn't rape anybody. I didn't. I didn't say you did, but you're coming and you're spinning everything that. Oh, I'm just trying to tell you basic information. Eighty percent. Eighty percent of young women who cross the border get raped. By illegals. Yes, by coyotes and illegals. Why wouldn't by you? By coyotes. Goodbye. Bears. <laughs> So are you a Hillary Clinton supporter then? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Okay, well what brought you here is because you wanted to see her get destroyed by Donald Trump tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the opposite, it's actually. Happening. He's bullying her. He's terrible. He's bullying her tonight, you think? Yeah. Oh, definitely not. She's been telling a lot of lies and he hasn't even how does hit it, her hard. How does it feel to be an Uncle Tom? How does it feel to be an Uncle Tom? <laughs> Don't get me started, buddy. You don't you don't you don't want to mess with me on that. You're Have you even trainer. read? You're Have a you race trainer. Read? Are you serious? You're a Have you even read Harriet Beecher Stowe? Have you even read the book? He probably doesn't know who Uncle Tom even is. Wow. Uh, you tell your kids, don't be a bully. You tell your kids, don't be a bigot. You tell your kids, do your homework and be prepared. And then you have this outcome and you have people putting children to bed tonight and they, they're afraid of breakfast. They're afraid of how do I explain this to my children? I have Muslim friends who are texting me tonight saying, should I leave the country? I have uh, uh, families of immigrants that are terrified tonight. This was many things. I, 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 this was a rebellion against the elites. True, it was a complete reinvention of, of, of politics and polls, it's true. But it was also something else. We've talked about race. I mean, we've talked about everything but race tonight. We've talked about income. We've talked about class. We've talked about region. We haven't talked about race. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And that's the part where the pain comes. And Donald Trump has a responsibility tonight to come out and reassure people that he is going to be the president of all the people who he insulted and offended and, and, and brushed aside. Yeah, when you say you, know, you want to take your country back, you got a lot of people who feel that we're not represented well either. But we don't want to feel that someone has been elected by throwing away some of us to appeal more deeply to others. I'm wishing Donald Trump luck. And I'm going to give him a chance. I want to issue the white lash. Listen, uh, I, I said, and I, and I stand by it, I said uh, that race was a part, and there was a part, that alt-right part, that was a part of a white lash. And, and if you listen to the whole quote, okay. you would agree with what I said. So, so I don't take that back. I, I did listen to it. And at the end, you said, good. what do I tell the kids? What and, I would and, tell and, your and kids, I, and, and, I'm a black man in America who went to Yale, who's and, written books, who served and a and president, I'm a, and, and, and I'm a ninth-generation American man, and I'm the first one in my family born with all my rights. I'm a ninth-generation American. And so we have not escaped because I went to Yale. You should all not the be a racial polemicist. You should be a 
Sarah, you, that, that, you should be ashamed fun. of yourself to Jones. say that to me to my face. I've spent more time Would in this country... Would I say it behind your try, back would be better? Uh, listen, hold on a second. I've spent more time than you have trying to be a racial reconciler in this country. Really? And, and, How do you know that? Oh, oh, do you know well, Ben Jones is a Ben Jones is a Q about me. Uh, well, do you, you apparently don't know anything about me. And yes, I, I'm, I do I'm, know. I'm your daddy, you your grandparents were teachers, your dad, your grandfather was a bishop. This is the problem George. This is the problem that we have right now. It is, in fact, the case that there was a populist revolt in this country, yes. both Sanders and Trump, but one of them was marbled through with this alt-right stuff. If someone like myself, who is married to a white woman, who has spent my entire life building bridges, can't point out the alt-right white lash reaction without being accused of being a racial polemicist, we're going to have a big problem. And I'm saying, how do you know sense of decency to say that? Okay, guys, you know what? I a healer. I Throughout a, torture, a horrific, brutal campaign, he has spoken sanity to power and oh, to those who hey, my the deepest the apologies. You don't know anything about me. You well, don't know talk, anything about afterwards. my healing. And I would say there are ways to get to reconciliation different from calling, the, focusing on the toxic elements, as you, you did on election both. night. You guys talk about well both. You don't talk about both. You guys will talk about it outside. I keep saying it over and over again, and people were like, oh, you're on this soapbox, this feminism soapbox. As a Latina woman, I tell you, I've heard it over and over again in my family. There's no way a woman can run the country. Really? We went a household. We, we are raising a large percentage of the country as single mothers. We have to uh, budget money that we don't have. We have raised people that go get post-secondary educations. How is it that we cannot run a country? And to the motherfuckers on Twitter fucking me, with me right now, I just want you to know, I don't give a fuck. I'm ready for the revolution. <laughs> you got me fucked up. I'm not that bitch. I'm not scared of you. You just made their day. <laughs> Muslim parents that are afraid right now aren't afraid because these kids with these signs. They're not. They're afraid because he said over and over again that he wanted to ban people of their faith. That lands like a bomb From in the lap. Into the H country. Hold on a second. You, 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 you want to explain to me why people who are scared shouldn't be afraid, and you want... But, but for you but, to say I, internment I, camps... Hey, hey, I didn't say internment camps. Hey, people are afraid of but that. But you should correct that. You should hey, correct that fear. That's not true. Well, well, Donald Trump right. has never proposed internment camps. You don't lecture me you on this stage. You have to correct that fear. Taylor, let, you guys let, won, and you need to back off. You need, to, you need to have a little bit of empathy and understanding for people who are afraid because your candidate has been one of the most explosively uh, provocative candidates in the history of our country. And there's a price to be paid for that. There and, and, and hold on a second. Let, 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 let him finish. I am then, not finished. I'm not going to be talked over tonight. I'm not. You have people who are terrified. And, and you have to take some responsibility for it. I am not spreading the terror. I am trying to damp it but down. Let me finish my point. Listen. You have people, Latino families, who, who say, this guy has said he's going to deport millions of people. They don't know should they sell their homes. They are terrified. That is a real fear. You have Muslims who have heard him say nothing good about the Muslim community the entire campaign. That's, that's a not real true. fear. And so, so, so they've heard him say, maybe he said it, but that's not what broke through. And so what we have to be able to do now, if you want, if you want unity, <laughs> and I want unity, and I'm working harder for unity than anybody on this stage, I guarantee you. If you want unity, we have to hear the pain first before you tell but people what, they're wrong to hurt. But what? Look at that guy over there. Wow. Bring him up. What's your, what's your name? Nay. Now, he's supposed to look like Donald Trump, but he's actually much too good looking. You are really handsome. Are you having a good time tonight? Night. Where's your daddy? And your mommy, right? Do you want to go back? Do you want to go back to them or do you want to stay with Donald Trump? Trump. Hold up. Hey, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Listen up. Hey.
Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Everybody sit down and be... Uh, and as I said last night, my number one priority in the coming two months is to try to facilitate a transition that ensures our president-elect is successful. Uh, and uh, I have been very encouraged by the, uh, I think, interest in pres President-elect uh, Trump's uh, wanting to work with my team around uh, many of the issues that this great country faces. Please. Sorry. Well, thank you very much, President Obama. I very much look forward to dealing with the president in the future. Uh, so, Mr. President, it was a great honor being with you, and I look forward to being with you many, many more times in the future. Thank you, sir. This is the moment we choose hope. 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 If he wins New Hampshire, you get four out of New Hampshire. He'd be sitting there at 260. And then again, you take a look at what's left on this map, and you would need, excuse me, he would need Wisconsin. Wisconsin would put him over. Wisconsin would put him at 270. At that he already point. has Wisconsin. Jeez. Look, do you hear that? Right. <laughs> he said it twice. The math is getting easier to do. Wisconsin would put him over. Wisconsin would put him at 270 at that point. Jeez. Fuck you, America. This is, you don't like anyone. You're just a fucking white racist country. This is who you are. And this is a good example of real America. I tell you something, you go to your workers, co-workers tomorrow, ah, yeah. fuck you, you're just all fucking racist. You're not white, you don't have blue eyes, you don't have blonde hair, you're not, you should not be in America. This is what it is. This is the real America. Wake up guys and smell the coffee. Shut up. I'm not gonna shut up. Why would I shut up for? Because your guy is winning? This is what it is? And tell me, why is he winning? Hey man, we're with you man. Why is he winning today? Tell me, they give me an explanation. Tell me why. If you want me to shut up, tell me the answer to my question. Why did Trump won today? Why? What is fighting solve? Everything. It solves nothing. It solves absolutely nothing. Do you know how privileged you are to come to an event and <laughs> insult the people at the event and not get the shit kicked out of you? Okay. You're surrounded by police protecting you. If we were insulting people, we would have to go inside. We're trying to preach love and togetherness and unity, and our tolerance doesn't need to reach over intolerance that's all we're saying these are all platitudes that don't mean anything you're here you think those people are anti-love yes <laughs> yes when they when they look at their neighbor that's muslim or look at their neighbor that's mexican they hate them they're fearful of them no they're and saying a disproportionate number of illegal aliens commit rape okay, 80 okay, percent wait, of the women wait, crossing wait, the border wait, get raped wait, and when it comes wait. to islam a good one in four thinks if suicide bombing so is sometimes evil, often justified. Why doesn't the right love ISIS? ISIS kills Muslims. Why doesn't the right love ISIS? Does the <laughs> yeah, that's a point against you. No, that's a if point the you. right hates Muslims, if the right hates Muslims, and ISIS kills Muslims, you hate Muslims, so you love ISIS. No, no, you're the one assuming that we hate Muslims. Are you kidding me? He's preaching it there. <laughs> that's <laughs> No, he's oh, not. Registry? Wait, wait, wait. If he wants a registry for any Muslim, what? What? Fuck you. Fucking you fucking fascist. I voted shit. for Obama. So? <laughs> Twice. Can the people out are actually... What? What? He's on a computer. He's not on a TV. I don't fucking care. People like you are a fucking cancer to society. You know what? Wouldn't it be great if you could just kill all the Trump supporters? Would you like to do that? Fuck you. Would you like to do that? No, I want to fix them. I want to change their views. And the first thing you do is tell them what? That Muslims are good people? That everyone is a human being and they should be respected. 
But isn't it possible that when you look at a group, some might have a disproportionate number that do a thing? Like, for example... The rich people. The rich people. Okay, so it's, yeah. okay, it's okay to make stereotypes about rich people, but not Muslims. Why? Because it's greed that made them rich. It's something that they actually stand for, and it's just straight greed. That Wait. makes them rich. What about if you help sequence the genome and you make $100 million in biotech? Is that greed? If you're not investing it into like charity, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you make money curing cancer and you don't put the money immediately back in the chair. making a profit off it, you're a capitalist scumbag. You're a capitalist scumbag if you're curing cancer. No, because you're doing it for a fucking profit. Do you see the Dearborn is what the world would look like if people learned how to get along. I think Islam hates us. I don't want to talk to him. Stay away from Detroit. If Donald Trump becomes president, it will be catastrophic for the Muslim community. My parents have actually brainstormed where we might go. If Donald Trump becomes president, then I have a message for Trudeau in Canada. You're going to get an influx of Muslims coming your way. There's an early 2014 email from Hillary Clinton, so not so long after she left Secretary of State, to her campaign manager, John Podesta. Mm -hmm. uh, that email, it states uh, that ISIL, ISIS, is uh, funded by Saudi Arabia and Qatar, the governments of Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Now, th this is a, I actually, I think this is the most significant email in the whole collection. Mm. Uh, and perhaps because Saudi and Qatari money is spread um, all over the place, inclu including into many media institutions. All serious analysts know, uh, even the US government uh, has mentioned or, or agreed with that some Saudi figures have been supporting ISIS, funding ISIS. But the dodge has always been that's, uh, well, it's just some rogue princes mm. using their cut of the oil money to mm. do whatever they like, but actually the government disapproves. But that email says that no, it is the governments of Saudi and the government uh, mm. and Qatar uh, that have been funding ISIS. The Saudis, the Qataris, the Moroccans, the Bahrainis, particularly the Saudis and the Qataris, are giving all this money to the Clinton Foundation uh, while Hillary Clinton is Secretary of, of State and the State Department is approving massive arms sales, particularly to Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Un un under Hillary Clinton, uh, and our Clinton emails uh, reveal uh, a significant discussion about it, um, the largest ever arms deal in the world was made with Saudi Arabia, more than $80 billion. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, during her tenure as Secretary of State, total arms uh, exports from the United States in, in terms of the dollar value doubled. Doubled. And, and of course, the consequence of that is that this notorious terrorist jihadist group called ISIL or ISIS uh, is created largely with money from the very people who are giving money to the Clinton Foundation. Yes. That's extraordinary. I'm Hillary Clinton and I approve this message. Islam is not our adversary. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. 
Now look, we're facing the worst refugee crisis since the end of World War II, and I think the United States has to do more, and I would like to see us move uh, from what is a good start with 10,000 to 65,000. You can't say that uh, Islam is a religion of peace because Islam it does not mean peace. Islam is uh, means it's Islam submission. So the Muslim is the one who submits. You know, there's a place for violence in Islam. There's a place for jihad in Islam. Islam is not our adversary. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. But for me, this election is uh, first and foremost about my children and about uh, the country, the world, and the future that I want for them and their generation to grow up in. Because um, their grandma's going to jail if she loses. <laughs> I'm going to share a few we thoughts about what I think is at stake in this election. We love and you. I love I love you. I love and why. I think mean, we can't sit on the sidelines. Oh and goodness gracious, they can talk about whatever they want to talk about. <laughs> I wouldn't go to France. I wouldn't go to France. Because France is no longer France. France is no longer France. I wouldn't go to France. Because France is no longer France. France is no longer France. I wouldn't go to France. Because France is no longer France. France is no longer France. I wouldn't go to France. Because France is no longer France. France is no longer France. I am the law and order candidate. This is not Republicanism as we have known it. The emerging racist ideology known as the alt-right. You had an unusual email arrangement. If they wanted to that, see them, they would certainly have been able you to know do what? so. So you have a rogue email system set up before she took the oath of office. You had two ambassadors that made several requests. Benghazi was a spontaneous reaction as a consequence of a video. That's for the people investigating it to try to figure out. <laughs> If, 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 if we fall for a, a bunch of okie doke What, like with a cloth or something? These are racist ideas, race-baiting ideas. Oh, no. Anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant, anti-women. That's sus. <laughs>
A simple cartoon character can be as bad as a Confederate flag or a swastika. That has thrust Pepe the Frog into the middle of a battle between the Clinton and Trump campaigns. Pepe the Frog. Ever hear of Pepe the Frog? Sad Pepe. Every Pepe even smoked. Popular it. character in internet memes. I never even heard of Pepe the Frog. This notion that, that an election tolls the criminal justice system is laughable. Now, having said all this, why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? Now, like the frog in the pot, water just keeps getting hotter. I'm worried that this whole uh, email thing is ultimately going to be her Achilles cankle. What difference at this point does it make? It's illegal. Don't use this cartoon frog with a sinister intent. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. Mommy says that if you don't have anything nice to say, then you shouldn't say anything at all. So Donald Trump needs to shut the fuck up! Needs to shut the fuck up! Needs to shut the fuck up! Yo, listen up! Trump, we're sick of hearing your offensive words that are racist, sexist, homophobic, and bullying bullshit! So sit your ass down! Have me call you out on it! You call breastfeeding moms disgusting? Which is ignorant and rude as shit! It's a natural and loving act of a mother! Motherfucker! Motherfucker! And it's also rude and ignorant to put your little kid in an anti-Trump video. And what kind of fucker attacks refugee families that are homeless and downtrodden? The only reason why Donald Trump wants to get rid of Muslims is to get rid of people like you. You said you hated gays like me, getting the equal right to marry my husband, who's the love of my life, hypocritically calling yourself a marriage traditionalist. I don't know why, but this guy looks like he has a huge resemblance to the NAACP leader. That's just pretty hilarious. Part of crowds you've made people's disabilities something you ridicule and mock? If we're making jokes about disabilities, do you brag about your money to make up for the small size of your cock? <laughs> Female reporter asks you a tough question you can't answer, and poor baby Donald gets mad. Oh, when your butt hurts, the best you can do is some sexist insult about her bleeding and being on the pad. You've insulted women as fat pigs, bimbos, and referred to us as bitches. You pull the sexy shit with me, and you might need some fucking stitches. I'd like to see you lose, Grandma. I've seen your fucking bigot imitations making fun of how Chinese people speak. Oh, but I guess you have to appeal to idiot racists when your ideas are so fucking weak. Dude, your penis is weak. And seriously, dude, you fucking call Japanese people Japs? Say to my face, fuck face. I want to see if they're gonna try to bomb Pearl Harbor this time. Come at me, bro. Dang that Yuling on. Dang that Yuling on. Dang that Yuling on. <laughs> Short little Jews counting your money is anti-Semitic as fuck. Yeah. God, is the greedy juice stereotype a surprise? Coming from a pox who's a bigoted fucking schmuck. What's fucking worse, calling black people thugs? Or are you referring to us as, quote, lazy? When you tweeted a neo-Nazi fake crime facts about blacks being killers, it shows you're both racist and batshit KKK crazy. Well, you just killed off the respect for the human race. You've made fun of people at your rallies for being overweight. So mean to get a laugh? Uh -oh. Is there anything that comes out of your fat fucking mouth that isn't a fat, that isn't a fat, that isn't a fat? Saying rapists, murderers, and drug dealers are fucking synonyms for Mexican immigrants? Goes over well with racist Republicans who love when you mirror their idiot ignorance. I'd like to mirror your ignorance just to see how other people like it. Your fucking busted ass, ratchet, or rat ass, cray cray hair. Oops! Our bad! Did we just go there? Get involved with the hashtag Top Trump Movement and get a shirt. Burn, baby, burn! Burn, baby, burn! burn, baby, burn. burn, baby, burn. 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 Oh, you're my friend, you
we've just elected a man so stupid. A man who is pandering to people who deny science and are poised to pull us out of climate change talks when we are spiraling into perhaps extinction. That is chilling. Let's face it, most Americans are uneducated. How are you feeling about the extinction of white men? Well, white men are a problem. Straight white men are a big problem. That's for sure. But I actually feel pretty good about it. I think uh, straight white guys have been screwing things up for long enough. High time for straight white males to uh, step back and let some other people do it. That's my dad. <laughs> Let us dive in to the facts. This is the United States foreign born population in millions from 1850 to 2065. Yes, that's right. We've opened a tunnel of time mathematically up into the future. And as you can see, uh, relatively low. Uh, this is the big 19th century immigration thing when there was no welfare state and there was very little public spending and people came for the freedoms rather than for the free stuff. You come for the freedom, you add value. You come for the free stuff, you subtract value. It's a basic equation. Now, from the 1930s, uh, late, late 1920s to the 1960s, uh, America put a hold on immigration to give people time to assimilate, to give people time to absorb. You know, you, you can't have that Roman feast where you just keep eating until your belly explodes. You need time to sort of digest. And there was a diminishment in immigration, as you can see. And this was, a, in the post-war period, an extraordinarily prosperous time for America, and in particular, a prosperous time, a growingly uh, increasingly prosperous time for blacks in America because uh, endless waves of third world migrants weren't pulling down their wages. So 1960, you see there's a fundamental change. And, and anybody who's not aware of this change doesn't understand what this election is all about. Here we see the large increase, massive increase in third world immigration into America. And this is fundamentally changing the voting patterns. It is fundamentally changing the culture. It is fundamentally changing the size and power and scope of the government. It's fundamentally changing the number of people dependent on the state and people who are dependent on the state are almost never going to vote to diminish the state and to reduce taxes, right? If you're on the receiving end of taxes, you want more people to pay taxes. If you're on the paying end of taxes, you want lower taxes. And this is the battle. It's not ideological. Uh, it is based on needs and dependence and fear and control. Uh, again, when you get these disparate groups in society, democracy is no longer about ideas, but about uh, theft and defense. So here we can see, as of 2015, 44.9 million foreign-born Americans. Now, we all understand that if uh, a European-descended person uh, has kids in America, then they're raised in the culture, they speak English, they absorb uh, through the culture, through the educational system, you know, the small government uh, ideology that America has always represented. Uh, whereas if they come in from, say, Somalia, they don't have that history. I mean, they simply don't. Any more than if you go to Somalia, you'll really understand how all of their uh, tribal systems work. I mean, you just you just won't. It will be foreign and strange to you, and you will gravitate back towards that, which you know. It's inevitable. It's natural. We're looking forward, 2065, according to current projections, 78.2 million foreign-born Americans. Uh, that is... Uh, extraordinary. And um, the funny thing is too, right, so non-Hispanic whites, the, you know, the, the people who kind of built the modern American country uh, brick by brick, non-Hispanic whites projected to become less than half of the U.S. population by 2055, right? That's a mere 90 years after the immigration was swung, you go from a vast majority to a minority. Uh, that is an enormous and fundamental and foundational change in America. And for people to resist it is perfectly understandable and perfectly natural. And we would not criticize any other group in the world for resisting that kind of overrunning uh, of foreign cultures and foreign ideas. Of course, right? I mean, if there was some country out there where it was like 90% one ethnicity, non-white, and then white people just started moving there and uh, overwhelming uh, the system and, and voting to change the fundamental system towards their own preferences, we would view that as a kind of invasion or a kind of imperialism or a kind of colonization. And we would 
not object to people saying, whoa, 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 we had this country for hundreds of years. Now all you people are coming in and changing it for your own preferences against our own preferences and our own desires. And people would say, well, yeah, you have the right to do that. Ah, you see it's white people. And you know, in the modern world, white people have uh, no, no rights. No, I mean, you, you can't, you can say anything you want, do anything you want to white people uh, because I don't know, <laughs> privilege, I'm still, still waiting for that, that card in the mail. Maybe it got lost. Maybe it went to some other country. Anyway, so uh, by 2065, um, America will be thoroughly balkanized. No racial or ethnic group is a majority of the population. Hispanics see their population rise from 18% today to 24% by 2065. Asians go from 6% today to 14% in the future. Now, <laughs> here's the thing. If all of these groups had generally the same ideas about limited government, uh, the rule of law, uh, bill of rights, separation of church and state, uh, free market, you know, all, all the things that generally constituted American exceptionalism for most of its history. If all these groups had the same ideas, then there would not be any particular statistical or ideological reason to oppose them. You may oppose them for other reasons, which may be closer to prejudice. So the question is, do the groups coming into America share the ideas of existing Americans. And uh, given now that this process has been going on for uh, decades after decade, right, of um, third world immigration coming into America, that has already changed the American landscape. The question is really not what is it, uh, uh, do, they, do they have different ideas than contemporary Americans now? The more important idea would be, or the more important argument would be, do they have different ideas from Americans in 1964, before the 1965 immigration uh, bill or act? So, we're going to dive into that so people can understand what is going on and the stakes that are going on and why Donald Trump is so popular and why the true Republicans who want smaller government are so invested in trying to figure out what's going on with immigration. Because if you don't have these facts, this makes no sense to you. And if it doesn't make any sense to you, you can't make sense of the ballot and what you might want to do. So let's move in. Immigration to the United States. These are the demographics, right? So uh, I'm sorry if you're just listening to this you might want to go to youtube.com slash free domain radio and watch this because it's a little bit on the visual side, even before I take my shirt off. So here we can see the orange uh, is Europe, right? European immigration, overwhelmingly European immigration, almost nothing from Africa, almost nothing from Asia, and little from Latin America. And uh, the other is, of course, a grab bag of the remaining countries. So here you can see that um, uh, obviously it cratered uh, in, in the war period and so on. Uh, immigration as a whole. But as you can see, uh, this is just up to uh, 2000. Um, European immigration has been steady or declining. And Latin America has exploded. Asia has exploded. Uh, Africa is, is growing enormously and other uh, is there as well. So this is a fundamental change in the country. And again, if people from Latin America, Asia and Africa and other had the same ideas about government and society and family and law and leadership and taxation and benefits and so on, uh, it would be a change in culture, but not a change in politics. But they don't. And this is the fundamental thing to understand, which we'll get to. Refugees and asylum seekers to the United States. Demographics. So, of course, uh, here you can see that uh, it has gone up 500% uh, from the post-war period to the uh, 1991 to 2000 period. And uh, it was almost all uh, European, right? European refugees, of course, people fleeing the post-war hell. Uh, that uh, engulfed uh, a lot of Europe. And uh, very little from Asia, uh, very, uh, uh, none from Asia and none from Latin America. A little bit from Asia in 1951 to 1960. And then here you can see from 1961 onward, massive increases in Asian refugees and asylum seekers and from Latin America as well. And again, if these groups all had the same belief systems, it would be one thing, but they don't uh, for, relative to the domestic United States population. So let's look at the economic freedom by region. So this is from 2015 from the Economic Freedom Index. And remember, all of the sources will be, will be below. Now, I'm going to tell you straight up so that I don't get the endless comments about this, not all of these graphs are zero-based, right? Because when we're looking for differences and when there's no country that has an economic freedom index of zero, uh, I'm not going to bother. So for some of these are not zero-based, I'm aware of it. I'm looking at discrepancies and I want to point them out. So North America has an economic freedom index of 74. Europe has an economic freedom index of 67. Now, the Middle East and North Africa have a, a, an economic freedom index 
of 62, South and Central America 60, Asia Pacific 59, Sub-Saharan Africa 55. Now remember, when you grow up in a particular environment, you absorb the values of that environment, and it's very, very hard to change those values later on. Plus, generationally, values are transmitted from parent to child, just as languages. And so it is not easy to break the cycle of the values that the original immigrants grew up with. And if you grew up in a place where you have significantly less economic freedom, which means more government dependence, larger government, more manipulation, more control, you don't have the same respect for and uh, skills within the free market and within a voluntary trade and transaction. You don't have as many uh, entrepreneurial skills because the government is so big and people generally depend on handouts and so on. So uh, this is uh, very, very important. And um, it's one of the reasons why when you get waves of people coming in from less economically free countries, they generally tend to want the same big government, big spending, um, and all of that, and, and they don't have the same skills and ability to participate in the free market and compete with all of the people who have, of course, native English skills and local cultural references and contacts and all of that. So uh, this is important. When you have different origins, you get different outcomes. So this is lawful permanent resident flow in the United States by country in 2014. Now let's look at these countries and we'll be having a look at some of their characteristics in a moment. So Mexico, of course, the largest, 134,000 and change. India, just under 78,000. China, just over 76,000. The Philippines, just under 50,000. Cuba, uh, just under 47,000. Dominican Republic, 44,5. Vietnam, 30 uh, and change. South Korea, 20,000 and change. El Salvador, 19,000 and change. Iraq, 19,000 and a bit. So not a lot of Europe uh, in this. And um, trying to figure out how all of these cultures and uh, countries and religions and mindsets and languages can all work together is a very complicated thing. I mean, imagine, just imagine you're planning a school. And this is the breakdown of your class. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? These countries in general are all speaking uh, different languages, uh, have different cultural references, different religions. How are you going to get everyone to work together? There's a massive inefficiency in bringing disparate languages and cultures together in a particular area. I mean, people say, well, diversity is our strength, but that's just the left saying, well, we, we welcome everyone who votes for the left, right? I mean, they don't care in particular about what it does to education for the native-born population. They don't care what it does for taxes. They, what they care about is these people are going to vote left. And that's the diversity that they're interested in, which means that they uh, have a hostility to white Europeans who generally vote to the right. They have a hostility uh, to white males uh, who vote for the right, who vote for smaller government. And they have a supposed love for all of these disparate cultures that uh, fragment the uh, society as a whole. And uh, diversity has been shown. Uh, multiculturalism has been shown. You can look up the Putman studies, P-U-T-M-A-N, has been shown to decay social trust. Uh, they call people to they cause people to cocoon inside their homes. It decays social trust, even for people of the same ethnicity in a particular neighborhood. And this is why the streets are empty of uh, people playing, uh, and children playing, and uh, they're empty of neighbors lending each other sugar and sitting on the back porch and whittling and chatting about the world and watching the cars go by, uh, because that's what happens uh, in these diverse uh, uh, countries uh, and cultures. Uh, there's just, it's too hard, it's too complicated to figure out what everyone um, wants and, and speaks and the rules and it's just not worth it so people don't bother. And so it really does fragment communities uh, in particular, which makes child raising much more complicated and difficult. Uh, and uh, so that's where people are coming into the United States as of 2014. Bradley wants you to run. <laughs> Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. Is that people think that Donald Trump is a clown. Do Donald, Donald Trump is a clown. I mean, does anybody seriously think that Donald Trump is serious about running for president? Donald Trump, you know, he's a clown. They said basically this is the beginning of the end for Trump. The beginning of the end. The beginning of the end? This is probably starting of the beginning of the end for, for Donald Trump. So right now we have Hillary's about a 75 or an 80 percent favorite. We have different versions yeah, of the forecast you can look at. The poll has Hillary Clinton up by double digits nationally, 12 points, 50 to 38, four-way race. Now, I'm walking around uh, Ohio. I sense 
a great disturbance in the force. As I walk around here and I watch the people and I hear people uh, either talking to them or overhearing them, here's the sense that I got. Oh no, Trump's gonna win. They're not gonna vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm looking around at these folks thinking, really? Like they, oh God, the establishment doesn't get it. Like it's not that she's a woman, although that, by the way, will, I mean, I'm, I just, Hillary screams, I am your standard politician. I'm the same politician you've seen all your life. And these folks don't look like they're in the mood for it. It is time for this incredible woman to step into the role that she is meant to have. And we, we, all of us, are going to help her get there. Okay. Here she is! <laughs> At least I can legally get fucking high because this sucks. And also, Canada's immigration website crashed. We're all gonna die. <laughs> you mean the Chaos Emeralds? Ah! Later when I came out to me today, she's a woman of color and said, I am so scared for my life. I am so scared because the people who called me the N-word when I was in high school voted for this man. I am so afraid. How can you? It's my right to show It's so difficult when you hear that coming from the most blood. You know you can't do much about it, but I'm here to say we are a community. We are a hot fucking university, people. We are going to stand for what is right. We are going to protect each other. We are going to love each other. And if you're afraid, look at all of these people around you. This is your community. They will make sure that nothing happens to you. They will fight to the team. You're right.
you imagine Donald Trump standing up one day and delivering a State of the Union address? Well, I can imagine it uh, in a Saturday night skit. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. He will never be president of the United States. Donald Trump will never be elected president of the United States. Now, Donald Trump is not going to become president of the United States. Donald Trump is not going to be president of the United States. However respectful of the fact that the people have not voted, he's not going to be president of the United States. Donald Trump is not going to be president of the United States. Let's be clear. Donald Trump will lose the election. I have one thing to say, one thing only, and that is that this race is over. I think Donald it, Trump will be the nominee and will lose badly. No one's going to be happier Holy than President Trump. Obama oh. when Trump loses. Uh, no one, except for me. I think uh, that Donald Trump's campaign is over. Like it's a like, zombie, right? Like it's a walking dead. It's not, there's nowhere for him to go. And the fact that most people think Donald Trump is going to lose. There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. <laughs> um, that's not going to happen. When the inevitable happens, which is a very substantial landslide victory on November 8th. And we need, when this race is over, to talk about why that was. I, I personally think this race is over. To me, this race is over. Politico's latest survey of political insiders agrees, quote, Clinton will crush Trump in November. This last week, he confirmed to the National Review that he is again considering a run in 2016. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Look at me. Do it. I will personally write you a campaign check now on behalf of this country, which does not want you to be president, but which. Hey guys! <coughs> so go check out healthcare.gov or call 1 800 318 2596, and someone will personally help you. You shouldn't have. What was that? Is that a dog? Hillary. It's Hillary. <laughs> reporting it, Katie. You're not reporting it, Katie. But there's something happening, Katie. There's something happening, Katie. They're chanting USA, USA, USA here. The mood only grows happier by the minute. Sorry to keep you waiting, complicated business. A lot of people have laughed at me over the years. Now they're not laughing so much. Thank you for allowing our country to have the freedom and opportunity to vote in a democratic and civil fashion. I would like to congratulate Miss Clinton on her winning of the President of the United States. What? what? Hillary Clinton didn't win. Donald Trump won. Donald Trump is the new president. <laughs> Dear America, Heads up, world, this one's gonna sting. Donald Trump is your new boss! Let me be the first to explain to you what actually happened. America happened. America! I love Mexican people.